Our next speaker is Dean Patterson and he is the State Community Partnerships Manager for Lend Lease. So a warm welcome to Dean. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, can everyone hear me down the back there? Thank you. Um, so first of all, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Logan City Council and Councillor Karansky for the invite today. Um, we are, you know, a large and important neighbour to what's happening at Logan Village. Uh, what I'd like to do today is talk very much about the ways that we can complement and support each other, uh, not compete. So picking up a few of those polls there around that sport doesn't appear to be that um, popular uh, or important to the village people, uh, or even uh, employment based on that poll. You know, maybe there's ways that we could, um, um, you know, provide the leadership in that area. Righto, so what I want to do today, it's a combination of just circling back to show you um, what we're actually trying to achieve down there and provide you with an update around the population and infrastructure that's either delivered or is on the way. So what I want to talk about uh, up front is very much about some of the numbers. So uh, we sold 4,000 lots at Yarra Bilba. There's about 6,500 people currently living there. Um, as far as our monthly sales, it can be anywhere from over 100 uh, to not much. Uh, probably the more, um, I suppose, balanced approach is that we're looking to sell around about 50 a month on project. Over the last 18 months, we're probably sitting at around about 35 uh, to 39 lots. Now, the reason I bring that up is that on, based on those numbers, there's as many as 100 to 120 people moving into the area every month, so quite a significant population. Um, other sort of highlights would be that last year there was 166 babies born in Yarrabilba alone. That's a hell of a lot of nappies. Um, we've also um, uh, had you know, some significant, uh, I suppose, improvements to infrastructure in the area, which I'd also like to talk you through. Um, and also want to make point of the importance that we all play in a precinct. So we're part of an important ecosystem. The ecosystem that we talk about is that we shouldn't be operating in isolation. Uh, so I know that when there's an inquiry about a commercial space down at Yarrabilba, the first question is how many people live at Yarrabilba and how many in the main surrounding catchment, of which Logan Village is very much part of that. So a little bit about the site, of which most people would be well aware of. I know people have been riding bikes and walking and riding horses and things in the site over the years. They're aware of the rich um, history as far as the military goes. The Eastern Yugambeh people are the traditional owners of the area. It's had obviously a, a forestry history as well. Um, if we look at some of the site constraints, so something that hasn't been brought up yet is the Southern Infrastructure Corridor. I'm not sure that we have anyone from Main Roads here, but that's a corridor uh, that's proposed or has got to be maintained for about 30 years as a potential shortcut through to the M1. So that's a piece of infrastructure that impacts all of us and the design has had to cater for that uh, considerably. The other major opportunity we have, or the, the bound, is uh, the beautiful Plunk Plunkett Conservation Park so uh, that's an important part of, of what we do there and the benefit to the community as far as getting out into that beautiful green habitat. Uh, we've been working closely with Parks and Wildlife over many years to ensure that um, it is activated and protected with um, you know, compatible uses. Uh, the other probably key defining features are that there's 25% of the whole site is in fact um, open space and a lot of those spines that you see there, we're, we're hoping to leave a really positive legacy given that uh, the uh, pine planting is very, um, very hard on soil quality. Okay, just the numbers, which um, I'll touch on from, uh, which some people here may have seen these numbers before, but we're looking to have 17,000 dwellings over the life of the project, uh, which equates to something like 1,500, uh, sorry, 15,800 lots. Uh, eventual population the size of Gladstone, which is uh, 45,000 people. Again, it'll go, you know, 
a little bit either way depending on the densities. Um, we've got a, a, an obligation to deliver 13,000 jobs on site and um, that's done through I suppose a number of um, employment generating spaces. So there's five, and just to give you an understanding of the hierarchy, because it may help you consider what you propose here at, um, at Logan Village. So a neighbourhood or local centre has floor area of between two and 3,000 square metres. A district centre uh, is in the vicinity of 10,000 square metres. So the best example of that is the, our current district centre down there at Yarra Builder as you drive in. And then you've got uh, a sub-regional centre which is getting up around the 50,000 square metres and that's the size of the town centre that will be at Yarra Bilba. So to give you an example what that is, is it's a Browns Plains uh, scale of facility or it's a Helens Vale down the Gold Coast. So large, a lot of public amenity within those areas. Then you've got regional, which is the likes of the Hyperdome and others. So just to put that into perspective. Um, so education is another area that's really important to us as a business. There's quite a developing story there at Yarra Bilber. Obviously, we've had the primary school, the Catholics open last year. Uh, they're getting up to around the 200 um, uh, enrolments. Uh, the state primary school opened this year only a few months ago started with 370, is now pushing up around the 400. Uh, the other fantastic announcement for the area was that the high school uh, has been announced, state high school for 2020, and also the um, Catholic secondary school uh, will follow the age group, of, I think it was the year twos last year through, uh, to hopefully open in 21 to 20. So they're in a, um, a co-located precinct, which we're working on council with at the moment. The other things that Lend Lease are doing in the area of education for our young people and everyone uh, is that we've um, undertaken a tertiary education study at the moment. We've interviewed or surveyed 250 people down at Yarra Bilba. It's interesting that 20% uh, of those people already have some form of um, formal education, 20% are currently studying, and there's another 70 planning to study in the future. So some really important information for us about how we shape those spaces and how we deliver not only education for careers, but um, find out what people want to do as far as their leisure, whether it be gardening, et cetera, and the, those very other interests, every other interest that's there. I mentioned the open space. Uh, we'll have a significant amount of, um, of sport and recreation facilities, and the, the area we're currently working on is this area here, around the P2 and P3 sports where we're working with council that could have um, you know, four rectangular fields as, as well as two ovals and the associated amenity required. Uh, it's a 30 year project. Yeah, we've been going six, seven years now. Um, you know, it, we've been surprised by the take up. Um, and we're not saying it will always stay that way but we've been able to gather a little bit of momentum with not only sales and amenity. I won't spend too much time on this, but uh, anyone who's been down near the sales centre, um, it uh, provides an opportunity for people to kick the tyres. This area um, will probably be there for another 12 to 18 months and then move down further to where our development front is. So what's been delivered in this district centre thus far? Um, obviously, the Coles and the McDonald's are some of those real anchors for the for the area. There's a couple of um, medical centres. There's certainly the IGA and Associated Convenience, the Caltex. Uh, there's the Meridian Mixed Use Centre, which will also include another, um, or not another, 300 square metres of office space. So the developer there is um, you know, putting his toe on the water to see what, you know, might, what sort of interest that might be there ongoing in the area. And again, um, our aim is to create that um, the ability to be very self-sustaining, so the local jobs for local people. Uh, just a bit of an update on the hotel as well. Unfortunately, um, we've had a few issues there around a builder going bust, and uh, we're working with the, the current financier at the moment to um, deliver a solution on that site. Uh, okay, so our uh, initial parklands, which we've got in place, and I'll just touch a little bit on our social infrastructure. So in, within this area, it's been fantastic. We've had a uh, park run in place. I think it's a four-year anniversary 
this year, and that's really unusual for us to be able to deliver in partnership with council that type of regular activity. Normally what happens is the developer goes in there and has a one-off event and costs a fortune. Um, everyone gets fit um, on the lead up to it and then it's all over. This is every single week there is an average of 80 people running around uh, Darlington Parklands and importantly uh, it's led by the community and, and, and somewhere in the vicinity of 14, 15 volunteers are involved each week, so really building our capacity. Uh, the other key activity which is taking place in Darlington Park, which I must note is now managed by council, is our regular market, so the monthly mingle market and the um, regular food market on the Sundays, which have been well supported. So just getting into a little bit of the infrastructure, so um, as far as the Shore Street Oval goes, so a little while ago, uh, council and lend -Lease partnered on a funding application and the councillor. Uh, to um, deliver some amenity or that first community infrastructure uh, for the community. And it was a successful grant, which in fact I'm delighted to say that the construction fencing went up yesterday. So that facility will begin construction immediately and it will be open or practical completion on the 15th of August. So um, that piece of enabling infrastructure is, is really important for us. One, it'll activate the oval to the levels and, and the important role that sport plays in building community, but it also has some spaces for to pick up the gap now that we have with the removal of the former sales centre on site. So we're hoping to have the time a little better. It didn't happen, uh, but if people can be patient there, there'll be a good outcome. So the, the next park that uh, people may or may not be aware of that's been delivered of reasonable scale is Buxton Park. And I'm picking up the, um, the note that someone spoke about, I might have been listening to about uh, water and amenity. Uh, so that's actually got a, a stormwater harvesting uh, area within that site. So it is a quite a different feel to the more manicured uh, Darlington Parklands. It's also got a dog park, so it's given me a few ideas looking at those flies there before, so thank you. Um, and uh, so that's yeah, only been opened recently, but it's uh, it's, also an important part of um, community, communicating some of that environmental awareness around various species. So other things which we've delivered in the short term uh, would be our public art strategy. So we've got about seven pieces there at the moment. Some of them are quite, um, uh, they're evoking much different responses. Um, some people think our fill price inflorescence right up on the left there is um, a big set of lips. Other people think it's other things, I can't really repeat. Um, but we've got a combination of artworks there that have been uh, developed by Indigenous artists, uh, developed by the community in partnership with artists. We've also got um, a mentoring program which has taken place here with these two artworks for Rachel Lee, who's worked with Daniel Templeman to deliver those artworks and, and build their capacity. So, commitment to innovation and some of the things we've been up to, and I only touch on a couple of these things as I know we want to pick up a little bit of time. Uh, Amanda mentioned about our grants programs. They're really, um, they've been great for us. You know, we've been criticised at times and I'll, I'll call it as it is about, you know, being the street, Queen Street cowboys that sit in the city and determine what our community wants. I think we've really changed the way we've, we've done our business uh, and engaging early. We ran a sport and rec forum, uh, I think it was in 2013, which there was a number of people at that, that event. Um, and we've looked to reach out at every possibility, but the grants is one of those uh, times when the community can tell us what they want. And we've actually supported a number of groups uh, based here at Logan Village as well, including the, including the Heritage Festival, um, the museum and, and other groups. A uh, few of the other highlights, uh, so the exchange uh, is an important um, activation for us. So the 13,000 jobs which we've got to achieve is a, is a bit of a tough target, but we do aspire to do better than that. Uh, so that's a local training and employment hub. Currently it's been open for probably 14 months. There's been 860 people pass through the doors looking for employment or training. Uh, there's been uh, 354 people, I believe it is, placed into uh, employment. That mightn't sound like a 100% you know, conversion, but um, uh, 
uh, it's, it's around about the 35%, which stacks really well in relation to what state and uh, national achievements are. Uh, the other employment generating space here is a training and employment hub that the Mayor launched for us in November last year. And so it's uh, run by another one of our partners, Gold Coast School of Construction, to train young people specifically in the area of uh, uh, skills required for the construction industry. And being on site, you know, it's in with, within the noise of the, the nail guns and the ability for contractors to come down and secure staff. Uh, what else? I'll leave it at that. So community amenity. So I, I touched on uh, some of those population serving amenity in the district centre, but also there's the, the Bridgestone Tyre Mechanical. There's good interest on gyms and other health and wellbeing industry. Um, the good doctor, Julian Fox, is um, opening a day hospital down there on site. So there'll be uh, some more space to, um, sorry, some, some other, um, I suppose, uh, local amenity that you don't have to travel 30 minutes away to access. Um, also the vet and the other uh, key opening I touched on was the state primary school and this has been that other great announcement uh, following well, in the lead up to the election uh, that there'll be a child and family services hub built on that site for $3.6 million. So that'll provide you know, early services for young families but it'll also be another community space which, which is much needed. So there will be a common area of about um, uh, 200 square metres which will complement well with the 100 square metres down in the sport and community. So down to the meat and potatoes. So as I said, where we don't want to be a competitor. Um, we want to complement and support what you're doing. And these are a few of the areas that we had a bit of a think about as a team about how we might be able to work more closely uh, with um, the Logan Village community. I'd have to say that, you know, being part of this process as well has been great for us. Um, you know, we can take our existing, you know, reasonably good relationships to new levels, uh, but also really um, work on some, some initiatives that um, will drive real value for both communities. So just to, touching on those, so I spoke about the Child and Family Services you know, the additional higher order facilities which will be available on site. So the town centre, as I mentioned, will be quite significant um, instead of travelling, although I take the idea about the, um, the movies cinema here, uh, sorry, the um, outdoor movies or the, the drive-in cinema, there may be a cinema down in, in um, the town centre so you'd only travel 10 minutes, not 30, to uh, Brown's Plains. What's come up already, obviously, linking... Uh, the trails, I should say, where are we down here? Somewhere there. The, the trails to Yarra Bilba, that's a corridor and opportunity for both communities. Uh, so uh, Logan Village has also got a proud um, acknowledgement of history and culture. We've got a newly uh, installed public art program that we can link closely together with. Um, our people within the exchange, and the exchange is managed by Access Community Services Limited, who are a social enterprise, want to engage with your businesses so that there can be that free flowing um, of information matching the employment needs and skills of uh, the businesses here with employees uh, or potential employees in Yarra Bilba. And it has been working both ways. I'm sure there's businesses here who have employed people from Yarra Bilba. I know there's a young lady at um, Stella Rossa Cafe that's a, a Logan Village person. There's a number of them working in Coles at the moment and also um, in McDonald's. So that's pretty well what I wanted to cover um, and I'd welcome some questions from the floor. And I, do I need my mouth guard and headgear? I do, okay. <laughs> I, I work in the estate um, and one of the questions that I actually get repeatedly asked is are we actually going to have pool facilities on those sporting fields? Is there any future plans? For pools? Um, so that we've getting a significant amount of interest. I'll just give you the full picture that um, we've been in discussions with a number of learn to swim groups over the years. I know that those same organisations uh, manage pools for local governments and there is this move away, and I'm talking broadly local government, from owning and managing pools. Um, so there's lease agreements and different models 
of pools managed by others. So um, to answer your question, um, in Council's desired standards of service, the provision of a pool, and please someone correct me, I, I believe it's around uh, 45,000 um, uh, catchment or population. So we're a little way off reaching that threshold, but I know Council is in discussions with some of those uh, pool operators and managers about um, how we can bring on those civic um, facilities sooner. Hello, my name's Philip Tanner. I'm very impressed with uh, Lynn Lisa's commitment to developing the community. Um, and no disrespect, I mean, Lynn Lisa's had a, um, a checkered past in terms of some of the development. Um, great on building uh, bulky goods and, and large shopping centres and, yep. and the such. However, in terms of developing the heart of a community, so to speak, um, not a lot of Main Street principles have been adopted, not a lot of placemaking principles adopted. Things like um, small tenancies uh, abutting Main Streets that people can own and potentially live above their business, create that diversity and allow the, uh, the local community to work local rather than uh, develop, you know, massive timelines and driving to different places. So have you got some insight as to how those Main Street uh, philosophies are going to be adopted within these sorts of developments? Okay. Yeah, very good question. Uh, look, I'd have to say that I don't believe we've got it right and, and as a team we think we could do some things better in our initial district centre. Um, the big challenge for us is, you know, when we, we were, it was a bit of the great unknown up front, um, you know, and we needed to develop momentum and it was probably more transactional rather than place, so I, I take your point. And, and with that in mind, what we've done as far as our town centre goes is we've actually been through a design competition with three or four different organisations and we've awarded a, um, the initial design or, or concept process with a particular organisation. So we're hoping very much to improve um, in that area. I mean, we have in, in previous developments had Soho products, which are, you know, a shop or a business at the front down uh, on the, at street level and then rear access. We've also had offices like above the Fonzie car park, um, you know, like the Fonzie happy days type area above car parks where people have run businesses out of. That's certainly our, atten our intention. Mm -hmm. And we're also um, aware that as many as 12% of our residents will work from home. So, uh, sorry, 12% of all businesses will be home-based businesses. So, good question. I hope that answers, starts to answer. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I live in Yarrabilba. Just wanting to know uh, what the current ETA, ETA is for the town centre. They asked that because when we first moved in, we asked and they said it was about a four to five year. Yeah. And then a young man called Simon, who was working at the sales centre, told us at one stage, it, they brought it forward to two to three years. And I asked the other day about it and they said it's back to four, or five, four to five. So I'm not really sure what, who knows what about it. Um, so I'm, what I'm wanting to know is yeah. what's the likely date for starting construction and what's the likely date for finishing it? Okay. So I think our initial timeline was 2025, and that is still probably where we're looking, but we are considering at the moment of bringing forward um, that, um, I suppose, a stage of it to 2023. So that might also coincide with the opening up of a second access point onto Waterford Tambourine Road, which residents have indicated that is really important in the event of emergency and to reduce traffic around uh, Camp Cable Road. So, yeah, 23rd, um, 2023. Look, I I'll, I'll, I'll say start 23. I, I don't think it's actually uh, been fully, um, I suppose, programmed. But, yeah, it's, it's fairly a high, a high um, I suppose, program at the moment. Yeah. So thanks very much, Dean. A round of applause. Thank you so much.